All right, kiddos. Um, today I'm going to give you a veritable boatload of help on doing mole calculations. We are going to work on um, assignment uh, seven from your manual, and I'll even probably do some problems from assignment number eight. So those are upcoming. In fact, I believe assignment seven is your next one that's due. Um, and of course assignment 8 is right around the corner. Now I helped out a bit on this in class, but we'll do a few more. Let's start with, uh, this is on page um, 89 of the older textbook. I believe that might be page 86 on the newer black version of your textbook. So I, I know we have a couple of those out there. So just uh, take a look. You'll, you'll recognize the problem as I begin. We're going to go ahead and start with number 17 where it says, what is the mass in grams of each of the following? And then it says to see a couple of sample problems in your textbook. So letter A is pretty straightforward. It says, what is the mass in grams of 1.00 moles of lithium? So it wants to know how many grams that is. Well, remember, if we take a look at the atomic mass of an element in grams, that is the mass of one mole of that element's atoms. And so for lithium, it says 6.941. Looks like we're only allowed one, two, three sig figs here. So we're going to go with 6.94 grams of lithium. Would give us one mole of lithium atoms. And then problems B, C, and D are virtually the same. And let's skip to letter E. And it says, well, what if you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon? Well, hopefully you recognize that number there. Doesn't that equal, in this case, 1.000 moles of carbon atoms? Because we have four sig figs here. So we can find the element carbon, and the periodic table says 12.011 is its atomic mass. So one mole would have a mass of 12.01. We have four significant figures, grams of carbon. As you recall, carbon is what Avogadro used to help calculate this numerical value for uh, one mole. Okay, that's 17. Number 18, you're going to see, is pretty similar. Number 18 says, how many moles of atoms are there in each of the following? So once again, it starts out pretty easy for you. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of neon. So we want to know how many moles that is. And that happens to be the numerical value of 1.000 moles of neon. This one did not ask you the mass, so we don't need to look it up. We just need to know how many moles of neon we have. B, C, uh, well, B is B's sort of like A. Let me do letter C for you this time, OK? So letter C is 3.25 times 10 to the fifth grams of lead. So it wants to know how many moles of lead atoms that is. So you guys know we have grams of lead here, so we're going to put that on the bottom so that unit divides out. And we want to hop into moles of lead. Let's just go ahead and stick the number one by mole. We'll always do that in these types of problems. And how do we find the mass of one mole of lead? You look it up on the periodic table. So that says 207.2. So 207.2. And you can see grams of lead cancel out quite nicely. And I'll be left with moles of lead. So let's take a look here. We will have 3.25. Let's clear this out for you so we start nice and fresh for the day. 3.25 second EE to the fifth divided by 207.2. And let's see what we get here. Now, we're only allowed three significant figures, so we need to round that off to 1,570 moles of lead. If you wanted to write it as 1.57 times 10 to the third, that would be wonderful. OK. Now, 19 and 20, I actually did by mistake on a previous video. 
So I'm going to go for these two. These are average atomic mass problems. So if you would see atomic theory video, I think I called it 3 underscore B. It was some homework help, so I believe I did. It was either 19 or 20 on that video for you. Okay, then we'll hop down to number 21. And number 21 says, how many atoms are there? How many atoms are there in each of the following? So letter A is 1.50 moles of sodium atoms. So we're going to put moles of sodium on the bottom this time. So we can divide out of that unit. And we're going to hop into atoms of sodium. Put a 1 by mole. Now atoms, you guys know, are a fundamental particle. We can It's a counted type of thing. And whenever we're going to a fundamental particle, I think we said in class like people or gorillas or marbles or in chemistry, atoms, molecules, or ions, we are going to use 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Moles of sodium cancel out and we'll be left with atoms of sodium. So let's take a look here. We have 1.50 and since Avogadro's number is on top, we'll multiply by 6.022 second EE to the 23rd and I get to three significant figures 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, now let's see what else is on number 21. Let me do letter C for you, and that's 7.02 grams of silicon. So 7.02 grams of silicon. Now here we're going to have two steps involved. We are going to go from grams of silicon to moles of silicon. And then we can go from moles of silicon to our fundamental particle, atoms of silicon. We'll put a 1 by mole in both places. And let's see how many grams there are in a mole of silicon. 28.086. Now we'll round that off to 28.09. If we go to the nearest hundredth, I'm pretty happy with that. And there are, we have to squeeze this in there, Avogadro's number of atoms in a mole. So grams of silicon divide out, moles of silicon divide out, and we're going to have atoms of silicon as our answer. So let's take a look. We'll clear this out. We have 7.02 divided by 28.09 times 6.022, second EE to the 23rd, and it looks like we have to three significant figures, 1.50 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silicon. Okay, that was number 21. And then we have number 22 from that same assignment. Once again, a pretty similar question to what we just did. It says, what is the mass in grams of the following? So I'm going to do letter E for you. Okay, how many grams uh, do we have if we have 25 atoms of tungsten? So as you can imagine, that's not going to be a very big number because we know that atoms are ridiculously small. So we're going to hop out of atoms of tungsten. Now think about what I'm going to get into. Can I go to grams directly? It's not how we like to do it. Let's hop into moles of tungsten first. Put a 1 by mole. And then we can go from moles of tungsten to grams of tungsten. Put a 1 by mole again. So we have atoms here, so that's a fundamental particle. So we're going to use Avogadro's number again. And then we have to look up the atomic mass of tungsten. We can do that pretty quickly. 183.84. 183.84. So atoms of tungsten divide out, moles of tungsten divide out, and yes, we are left with grams of tungsten. So let's see. We have 25 divided by 6.022, second EE to the 23rd, 
and times 183.84. It's like we're only allowed two sig figs here, so we're going to go 7.6 times 10 to the negative 21st grams. And like we said, that's a pretty small number, isn't it? Okay, the rest of assignment number uh, 7 I think you can handle on your own. You know what, I'm going to help you with one just as a little uh, bonus for you guys sticking it out so far into the video. This is other problem and it's letter H and it wants you to find the number of moles in 1.50 metric tons of copper. So some of you have forgotten what a metric ton is. We actually had it in a previous homework assignment. We're going to have to go from metric tons to kilograms here. And a metric ton is defined as a thousand kilograms. And then we can go from kilograms to grams. And a kilogram has lots of grams in it, a thousand of them. And remember the answer is how many moles do we have? So we can go from grams of copper to moles of copper, put a one by mole, and let's look up the atomic mass for copper, 63.546, so we can say 63.55. Okay, and you guys can finish that off, I'll bet, by yourselves. You'll have the answer in moles of copper. Okay, let's take a quick look at assignment number eight now. And assignment number eight is from page 90 of the older version of the book. I believe that might be 87 in the newer version of the book. And we have to do problems 24 through 30. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with number 24. And that reads, determine the mass in grams of each of the following. And letter A ask for the mass in grams of 3.00 moles of aluminium. So we'll hop out of moles of aluminium and we want the mass in grams. Put a one by mole. Let's look up the atomic mass of aluminum, 26.982. So we're going to go with 26.98. So moles divide out nicely. And let's see, we have, let's clear this out. 3.00 times 26.98. It's like we're only allowed three significant figures. So we're going to go with 80.9 grams of aluminum. That's letter A. Let's see what else we have on number 24. That might be fun. Let's do letter G. So letter G is 1.05 times 10 to the 18th atoms. Of mercury. So we're going to go from atoms of mercury to moles of mercury. Put a one by mole. And then we can go from moles of mercury to grams of mercury. We'll put a one by mole. Okay? An atom is a fundamental particle. So we'll put Avogadro's number there. And the mass of mercury. Let's take a quick look here. 200.59 200.59 grams per mole so atoms and moles divide out and we'll be left with grams of mercury here so let's take a look 1.05 second ee to the 18th divided by 6.022 second ee to the 23rd and then we'll multiply that by 200.59 and we get to three significant figures, 3.50 times 10 to the negative fourth grams of mercury. Okay, so that's how we handle number 24. Uh, let's take a look at number 25. Number 25, it looks like it wants electrons, protons, and neutrons. Um, and it wants subatomic particles. So that is a table that you can do on your own. On your own. Sorry to make you do that, folks. Um, then number 26 asks you to define uh, an atomic mass unit and how it is related to a carbon-12 atom. 
also remember uh, carbon 12 um, is an isotope of carbon that has an atomic mass of 12.0000 infinite atomic mass unit. It's a defined amount. And so everything, every other element, its atoms are related to the mass of a carbon 12 atom. So if it is 1 12th the mass of a carbon 12 atom, it would have a mass of exactly 1.000000, etc., atomic mass units. If it's 10 times larger than a carbon 12 atom, it would be 120.00000 atomic mass units. So 26, the rest of that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, and 27, they are some definitions. I think you can do that. And 28 wants you to go from grams to number of atoms. So let's just do one more of those, and we'll call it good enough for this video. So on number 28, letter A, we have 40. 0.1 grams of calcium. Oh, that's an A, not a U. And it wants to know how many moles we have. So we'll just go from grams of calcium to moles of calcium. Put a one by mole, and I'll let you finish that off. Because I want to do another one. Let's hop over to letter H, where we have 50 atoms of barium. So we are going to go from atoms to moles of barium. So put a one by mole, and an atom is a fundamental particle. So that's Avogadro's number. And you can see that we'll end up with moles of barium there, and I'll let you finish that up on your own. I think after this video, you have a pretty good handle on converting from grams to moles or moles to grams, or moles to atoms of any um, of any element on the periodic table. If you need more help, you're going to have to come in and see me. Uh, you can watch this video over and over and over again, and the other ones that just precede this to get a pretty good grip on what's going on. So thanks for your time. Hope this helped. Bye-bye.